ဟာလိုမင်္ဂလာပါဒီနေ့ကဗောနော်လေဆိုတင်ချာအောင်လေးလာအနာဗောနော်လီနေ့ကအဲ့ဒီပရောဘ်လုံးနေအားလို့
is using the definition of vector length in Rn, and then multiply one over that length times the vector v, and this is just a scalar, and then you get your vector u. Let me do an example just to make sure you get the idea. So let's say I have some vector, let's say I have some vector v. Let's say I have some vector v, and it's in R3. Let's say it's 1, 2, minus 1. What is the length of v? The length of v is equal to the square root of 1 squared plus 2 squared plus minus 1 squared, minus 1 squared. And that is equal to the square root of what, 1 plus 1 plus 4. Square root of 6. So that is the length of v. So if I want to construct a normalized vector, u, that goes in the same direction as v, I just take, I can just define my vector u as being equal to 1 over the length of v, 1 over the square root of 6, times v. So times 1, 2, minus 1, which is equal to 1 over the square root of 6, 2 over the square root of 6, and minus 1 over the square root of 6. And I'll leave it for you to verify that the length of u is going to be equal to 1. And I'll just throw out one other idea here that you'll often see. When something is a unit vector, instead of using this little arrow on top of the vector, they'll often write a unit vector with a little hat on top of it like that. That signifies that we're dealing with a unit vector. And for those of you who've taken your vector calculus or have done a little bit of engineering, you're probably familiar with the vectors i, j, and k. And the reason why they have this little hat here is because these are all unit vectors in R3. There are and members of R3, and they're all unit vectors. These are actually the basis vectors in R3. And for those of you all who've been watching my transformation videos, these are equivalent to the vectors e1, which I could write with a hat on it, really, e2, and e3, which are the standard basis vectors in R3. Anyway, now that you've been exposed to it, now I can start to use the idea of a unit vector in future videos. We covered the idea of the unit ไอ้ตัวนั้นน่ะสายเนี่ยหาบ่เนาะตัวดีมายูนิตเบต้าซึ่งตัวละอันนี้เนี่ยวันชื่อเลยสวยจังสุดยอดตัวอะไรบ่
line that went through the origin, you would have to shift it by some vector. It would have to be some other vector plus CV. But anyway, we're starting off with this line definition that goes to the origin. What I want to do in this video is to define the idea of a projection, of a projection onto L of some other vector X, of some other vector. So let me draw my some other vector X. Let's say that this right here is my other vector X. Now, a projection, I'm going to give you just a sense of it, and then we'll define it a little bit more precisely. A projection I always imagined is if you had some light source that were perpendicular somehow, or orthogonal to our line. So let's say our light source, the light was shining down like this. because, And I'm doing that direction because that is perpendicular to my line. I imagine the projection of X onto this line is kind of a shadow of X. So if I were to, if this light was coming down, I would just draw a perpendicular like that, and the shadow of x onto L would be that vector right there. So we can kind of view it as the shadow, shadow of x on our line L. That's one way to think of it. Another way to think of it, and you can think of it however you like, is how much of x goes in the L direction. So in the, but the, the technique would be the same. You draw a perpendicular from x to L, and you say, okay, then what do I, how much of L do I have to go in that direction to get to my perpendicular? Either of those are how I think of the idea of a projection. I think the shadow is part of the motivation for why you, it's even called a projection, right? When you project something, you're kind of beaming light and seeing where the light hits on a wall, and you're kind of doing that here. You're beaming light, and you're seeing where that light hits on a line in this case. But this isn't a, you can't do anything with this definition. This is just kind of an intuitive sense of what a projection is. So we need to figure out some way to calculate this, or a more mathematically precise definition. And one thing we can do is, when I created this projection, let me actually draw another projection of another line, just so, or another vector, just so you get the idea. If I had some other vector over here that looked like that, the projection of this onto the line would look something like this. You just draw a perpendicular, and this projection would be like that. So I don't want to talk for just this case, I want to give you the sense that it's the shadow of any vector onto this line. So how can we think about it with our original example? Well, in every case, no matter how I perceive it, I drew, I dropped a perpendicular down here. And so if we can construct a vector right here, we can say, hey, that vector is always going to be perpendicular to the line. And we can do that. I wouldn't have been talking about it if we couldn't. So let me define this vector. I'm not going to define it. What is this vector going to be? If this vector, let me not use all these thises, let me say that this vector, we know we want to somehow get to this blue vector. Let me, yeah, let me keep it in blue. That blue vector is the projection of x onto L. That's what we want to get to. Now, one thing we can look at is this pink vector right there. What is that pink vector? That pink vector that I just drew, this is, this is x. That's the vector x minus the projection, minus this blue vector over here, minus the projection of x onto L, right? If you add the projection to the pink vector, you get x. So if you add this blue projection of x to x minus the projection of x, you're, of course, going to get x. And we also know that this pink vector is orthogonal to the line itself, which means it's orthogonal to every vector on the line, which also means that this dot product is going to be 0. So let me, let me define the projection this way. The projection, this is going to be my slightly more mathematical definition. The projection of onto L of some vector x is going to be some vector, some vector that's in in L, right? I drew it right here, this blue vector. I'll trace it with white right here. Some vector in L where, where, and this might be a little bit unintuitive, where x minus, where x minus the projection vector x minus the projection onto L of x is orthogonal, is orthogonal to my line. So I'm saying the projection, I'm, this is my definition. I'm defining the projection of x onto L is some vector in L where x minus that projection is orthogonal to L. This is my definition. And that is a little bit more precise, and I think you make, it, it makes a, a bit of sense why it connects to the idea of kind of the shadow or a projection. But how can we deal with this? I mean, this is still just in words. How can I actually calculate the projection of x onto L? 
Well, the key clue here is this notion that x minus the projection of x is orthogonal to L. So let's see if we can use that somehow. So the first thing we need to realize is by definition, because the projection of x onto L is some vector in L, that means it's some scalar multiple of V, some scalar multiple of our defining vector of our V right there. So we could also say, we could say, hey, look, we could rewrite our projection on, of x onto L. We could write it as some scalar multiple times our vector V, right? We can say that this is equivalent to our projection. Now we also know that x minus our projection is orthogonal to L. So we also know that x minus our projection and I, could, I just said that I can rewrite my projection as some multiple of this vector right there. I mean, you can see it the way I drew it here. It almost looks like it's two times this vector. So we know that x minus our projection, this is our projection right here, is orthogonal to L. Orthogonality, by definition, means it's dot product with any vector in L is zero. So let's dot it with some vector in L. Well, we could dot it with can dot it with this vector v. That's what we used to define L. So let's dot it with v. And we know that that must be equal to 0. We're taking this vector right here, dotting it with v, and we know that this has to be equal to 0. That has to be equal to 0. So let's use our properties of dot products to see if we can calculate a particular value of c. Because once we know a particular value of c, then we can just always multiply that times the vector v, which we are given. And we will have our projection. And then I'll show it to you with some actual numbers. So let's see if we can calculate a C. So if we distribute the C, or sorry, if we distribute the V, we know the dot product uh, exhibits the distributive property. This expression can be rewritten as, as X dot V, right? X dot V minus C times V dot V. C times V dot V. I rearrange things. We know that the scalar, we know that C minus C V dot V is the same thing we can write it as minus C V. It's minus C times V dot V, and all of this, of course, is equal to zero. And then if we want to solve for C, let's add C V dot V to both sides of the equation. You get X dot V is equal to C times V dot V. Solving for C, let's divide both sides of this equation by V dot V. You get, in a different color, C is equal to this x dot v divided by v dot v. Now what was c? c was, we're saying the projection of x, let me write it here, the projection of x onto L is equal to some scalar multiple, right? We know it's in the line. We know it's in the line. So it's some scalar multiple of this defining vector, some scalar multiple of the vector v, and we just figured out what that what that scalar multiple is going to be. It's going to be, it is going to be x dot v over v dot v. And this, of course, is just going to be a number, right? This is a scalar still. Even though we have all these vectors here, when you take their dot products, you just end up with a number. And you multiply that number times v. You just kind of scale v, and you get your projection. So in this case, the way I drew it up here, my dot product should end up with some scaling factor that's, you know, maybe close to 2, so that if I take start with a v and I scale it up by 2, this value would be 2, and I'd get a projection that looks something like that. Now, this is, looks a little abstract to you, so let's do it with some real vectors, and I think it'll make a little bit more sense. And nothing I did here only applies to R2. Everything I did here can be extended to an arbitrarily high def, uh, uh, dimension. So even though we're doing an R2, and R2 and R3 is where we tend to deal with projections the most, this could apply to Rn. So let me do it as a particular case. Let me define L. Let's, let me define my line L to be the set of all scalar multiples of the vector, I don't know, let's say the vector 2, 1, such that all of them are, you know, any the C is any real number. So let me draw my... Let me draw my axes here. That's my vertical axes. This is my horizontal axis right there. And so my line is all the scalar multiples of the vector 2.1. And actually, let me just call my vector 2.1. Let me call that right there the vector v. So let me draw that. So I go 1, 2, go up 1. That right there is my vector v. Vector v right there. And the line is all of the possible scalar multiples of that. 
So let me draw that. So all the possible scalar multiples of that, you just keep going in that direction, or you keep going backwards in that direction, or anything in between. That's what my line is. It's just all of the scalar multiples of my vector v. My vector of my vector v. Now let's say I have another vector x. Let's say I have a vector x. And let's say that x is equal to 2, 3. We draw x. x is 2, and then you go 1, 2, 3. So x will look like this. Vector x will look like that. Now let me draw a little bit better than that. Vector x will look like that. That is vector x. What we want to do is figure out the projection of x onto L. We could use this definition right here. So let me write it down. The projection of x onto L is equal to what? It's equal to x dot v, right? Where v is kind of the defining vector for our line. So it's equal to x, which is 2, 3, dot v, which is 2, 1, 2, 1, all of that over v dot v. So all of that over 2, 1, dot 2, 1, times our original defining vector v. So what's our original defining vector? It's this one right here, 2, 1. So times the vector 2, 1. And what does this equal? See, when you take two, when you take these two dotted each other, you have 2 times 2 plus 3 times 1. So 4 plus 3, so you get 7. This all simplified to 7. And then this, you get 2 times 2 plus 1 times 1. So 4 plus 1 is 5. So you get 7 fifths. That all simplified to 5. That was a very fast simplification. You might have been daunted by this kind of strange looking expression. But when you take dot products, they actually tend to simplify quite very quickly. And then you just multiply that times your defining vector for the line. So we're scaling it up by a factor, by a factor of 7 fifths. So multiply it times the vector 2, 1. And what do you get? You get the vector, we do a new color. You get the vector 14 over 5, and the vector 7 over 5. And just so we can visualize this or plot it a little better, let me write it as decimals. 14 over 5 is 2 and 4 fifths, which is 2.8. And this is 1 and 2 fifths, which is 1.4. And so the projection of x onto L is 2.8, 1.4. So let's see, 1, 2, 2.8 is right about there. And I go 1.4 is right about there. So the vector is going to be right about there. I haven't even drawn this too precisely, but you get the idea. This is the projection. Our computation shows us that this is the projection of x onto L. If we draw a perpendicular right there, we see that it's consistent with our idea of this being the shadow of x onto our line L. Well, now, now we actually can calculate projections. In the next video, I'll actually show you how to figure out a matrix representation for this, what's essentially a transformation. Oh, Bobby, Dalia, the Dolly Shima, the Bonan, the story, and we were my machine learning for mathematical machine learning. My bone, my majority to projection, but there are many people. You might as well the idea to say that the Gona did as they had it for one. I had to tell you, you know, I know. And you know, so other gonna sit it down a little bit of You know, other gonna sit out of a particular sit out down a little bit of 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 a little Hello, hello. Oh, yeah, I'm going to be here to see you now, so. That was defined as all of the scalar multiples of some vector, or I'll just write it like this, where the scalar multiples obviously are any real number, and we defined a transformation, and I didn't speak of it much in terms of transformations, but it was a transformation. We defined a projection onto that line L as a transformation 
in the video we drew it as is transformations within R2, but it could be in general a transformation from Rn to Rn. And we defined it as the projection, the projection of x onto L was equal to the dot product of x with this defining vector, x dot this defining vector, divide, divided by that defining vector dotted with itself, that defining vector dotted with itself, all of that times the defining vector of the line. This was our definition. Now, a couple of things might have popped out at you right when we first saw this. This, when you dot a vector with itself, what's that equal to? We know that if I take some vector, we know if I take some vector and I dot it with itself, that is equivalent to the length of the vector, the length of the vector squared. So we could rewrite this as being equal to x dot v over the length of v, the length of v squared, all of that times v. Now, wouldn't it be nice if the length of v was 1? If the length of v was equal to 1? Because then if v was, if the length of v was 1, or this is another way of saying that v is a unit vector, then our formula for our projection would just simplify to x dot v, all of that, times, this will just be some scalar number, that times v. You're saying, hey, Sal, how can we just, you know, how, how do we know if this is a unit vector or not? And what, I'll, what you can realize is that any, you know, let me draw it this way. So when I drew it in the previous video, I just picked a line like that. And the line can be really defined, this vector v in the line, to be any of the vectors that's contained in the line. So the vector v can be like that. So let's say someone gives you a vector v that isn't a unit vector. So let's say that the length of v is not equal to 1. How can you define a line using some unit vector? Well, you can just normalize v. So you can define some unit vector right here. You could some, define some vector right there. Let's call it u, and I'll say it's a unit vector. And let's just say that that is equal to 1 over 1 over the length of v times v. I showed you this in the unit vector video. You can construct a unit vector that goes in the same direction as any vector, essentially just by dividing, or I guess multiplying that vector times 1 over its length. So in general, we can just always redefine the line, right? All of the possible scalar multiples of v are going to be the same thing as all of the scalar multiples of our unit vector, u, which is just a scalar multiple of v, right? So we can redefine our line. If we redefine our line L as being equal to all of the possible scalar multiples of our unit vector, where the scalars are any members of the real numbers, then our projection definition simplifies a good bit. The projection of x onto L then just becomes x dot our unit vector times the unit vector times the unit vector itself. And so you can imagine a world, let's, I mean, that, that, that case that I did in the previous video where I had these two vectors, where I said the vector v that defined the line, I think it was the vector 2, 2, 1, and our vector x was equal to 3, was equal to 2, 3, 2, 3. If you want to do this definition, we just have to turn this guy into a unit vector first. And the way you do it into, the way you turn him into a unit vector is you just, to figure out the magnitude, so in this case, the magnitude of v is equal to what? 2 squared plus 1 squared is 1, and you type, times the square root, or you take the square root of that. Let me just write this equal to the square root of 2 squared plus 1 squared, which is equal to the square root of 5. And so you can define your u, your u, your unit vector, could just be 1 over this times that guy. So it's 1 over the square root of 5 times 2, 1. You could multiply it out or not. You could just leave it in this form. But you can always, for any vector v, you can always find a unit vector that goes in the same direction, assuming that we're dealing with non-zero vectors. So you can always reduce anything like this to some other definition like this, where this is the unit vector version of your vector v up there. Now, I just said that, look, this is a transformation from Rn to Rn. The one thing that we're not sure of just yet is, is this a linear transformation? And I said we can always write 
it like this. So let's see if this is always going to be a linear transformation. So there's two conditions for it to be a linear transformation. Transformation. The first is, is the transformation. So let's see what happens if I take the projection. Let's see what, it take, what happens if I take the projection onto L of two vectors. Let's say the vector A plus the vector B. If I take the sum of their vectors, if this is a linear transformation, this should be equivalent to taking each of their projections individually and then summing. Let's see if this is the case. So this is equal to, by our definition, we'll use a unit vector version because it's simpler. This is equal to A plus B, A plus B, that's our x, dot u, dot u, and then all of that times our unit vector. Now we know that the dot product has a distributive property, so that this is equal to a dot u plus b dot u, b dot u, these are unit vectors, all of that times the vector u. These are just scalar numbers, so scalar multiplication has the distributive property, so this is equal to a dot u times our vector u, remember this is just going to be some scalar, plus b dot u times our unit vector u. And what is this equal to? Well, this right here is equal to the projection of a. This is equal to the projection of a onto L by definition, right here, by this definition, if we assume that we're dealing with a unit vector definition for the line. And then this is equal to this whole thing right here. And then this whole thing right here is equal to plus the projection onto L of the vector b. So we see our first, our, first, uh, our first condition for this being a linear transformation holds. The a projection of the sum of the vectors is equal to the sum of the projections of the vectors. Now our second condition is that the projection of a scalar multiple should be equal to a scalar multiple of the projection. Let me write that down. So what is the projection onto L of some scalar multiple of some vector A? Well, that is equal to C A dot, our unit vector U, times the unit vector U. And this one's a little bit more straightforward because this is you know, the scalar multiple. We've seen it in our dot product properties. This is equal to C times A dot U times the vector U. And this is just equal to C times, this right here is the projection of A onto L. The projection of A onto L. So we've met both of our conditions for linear transformation. So we know that our projection onto a line L in Rn is a linear transformation. So that tells us that we can represent it as a matrix transformation. So what I want to do, what I want to do, we know that projection of x onto L, we already know this definition, it can be rewritten, it doesn't have to rewrite it, as x dot some unit vector that defines our line, let me draw it with that little hat to show that it's a unit vector, times the unit vector itself, so that we actually get a vector. And now what I want to do is, how can I write this as some matrix product, some matrix vector product? I want to write it as a product of some matrix times x, times x, times x. And just to simplify things, since we're actually dealing with a matrix, let's assume Let's, let's, let's limit ourselves to the case of R2. So I'm assuming that my projection onto L is going to be a mapping from R2 to R2. But you could do what I'm doing here with an arbitrary dimension. So if we're doing an R2, then our matrix A right there is going to be a 2 by 2 matrix. And we've seen in multiple videos that to figure out the matrix A, we just take the identity matrix that just has, its, has the basis the standard basis vectors as columns, 0, 1, or 1, 0, and then 0, 1. And we apply the transformation to each of these columns. So we could say that A is going to be equal to, its first column is going to be equal to the projection onto L of this thing right here. We do it in this orange color right here. So what is that going to be? That is going to be this dot U. So let me write my u. So my unit vector, let's just assume that u can be rewritten as my unit vector is equal to some u1 and u2, just like that. And so what I need to do is I need to take this dot my unit vector. Let me write this down. 
let me write this on the side. So the first thing I want to do is figure out what the projection, oh, I'll just write here. The projection onto L, let me write it this way. So writing the projection, we know the projection is just equal to this dot this times that vector. So let me write that. So it's the vector one zero dot the vector, the unit vector u, which is this u1, u2, and we're going to have that times my unit vector, times my unit vector, or maybe I'll write it like this, times the vector u1, u2. This is going to be my first column in my transformation matrix. My second column is going to be the same thing, but I'm now going to take the projection of this guy. The definition of our projection is you dot this guy with our unit vector, so we get, so we dot it, taking the dot product of 0, 1, 0, 1 dot my unit vector, dot u1, u2, and I'm going to multiply that times my unit vector, times u1, u2. And this seems very complicated, but it should simplify when we actually try to work out our transformation matrix. So let's do it. When I dot these two guys, what do I get? Let me write it here. So my matrix A will become 1 times u1 plus 0 times u2. That's just u1. This whole thing just simplifies to u1 when I take the dot product of these two things times u1, u2. That's going to be my first column. And then my second column, if I dot these two guys, I get 0 times u1 plus 1 times u2. So I'm going to get u2 times my unit vector u1 u2, and then if I multiply that out, this will be equal to what? I can just write them as columns. u1 times u1 is u1 squared. u1 times u2 is u1, u2. u2 times u1 is just u2 times u1. And then u2 times u2 is u2 squared. So you give me any unit vector, and I will give you it's trans the transformation that gives you any projection of some other vector onto the line defined by that. I know that was kind of a, a very long way of saying that, but let's go back to what I did before. We define, let's say we want to find any projection onto the line, onto the vector, we draw it here. Do the same example that we did in the last video. But if I have some vector v that like looks like that, we said the vector v is equal to the vector 2 1, that was my vector v. How can we find some transformation for the projection onto the line defined by v? So onto this line right here, the line defined by v. Well, what we can first do is convert v into a unit vector. So we can convert v into a unit vector that goes in the same direction. So unit vector u. And we did that already up here, where we essentially just divided v, v by its length. So let's take v and divide by its length. The unit vector was this, 1 over the square root of 5 times our vector v. So it was this. It was 1 over the square root of 5 times our vector v right there. So you start with a unit vector there, and then you just create this matrix, and then we will have our transformation matrix. So if this is our u, what will our matrix be equal to? If this is u, then our matrix would be equal to u1 squared. Well, what is u1 squared? Let me rewrite our, let me actually rewrite our u a little bit, not at an angle. So our vector u, our unit vector that defines this line, is equal to the vector 2 over the square root of 5 and 1 over the square root of 5. I just multiplied out this scalar. So if we want to construct this matrix, we get a is equal to u1 squared. What's this squared? It becomes 2 squared, 4 over the square root of 5 squared, which is just 5. Equals 4 over 5. And then what is u1 times u2? 2 times 1 over square root of 5 times square root of 5. So 2 fifths. 2 fifths. I just multiply these two. What is u time, 2 times u1? Well, same thing. Order doesn't matter when you multiply. So this will also be 2 fifths. And then what is u2 squared? 1 squared over square root of 5 squared is just 1 fifth. 1 fifth. So now we can say, and this is the neat thing about creating these matrices, that the projection, you know, let's say we have some, let's say this is the origin right here, and we have some other vector x right here. 
we can now define our transformation, the projection of onto L, where L is equal to any scalar multiple of our unit vector U, that's right here, or the member of the reals. That is our line L. The projection onto L of any vector X is equal to this matrix, is equal to the matrix 4, 5, 2, 5, 2 fifths, 2 fifths, 1 fifth times x, which is a pretty neat result, at least for me, because we, once again, reduced everything to just a matrix multiplication. So if you take this x and you multiply by this matrix, you're going to get its projection onto the L, onto, onto the line. If you, take, if you take this vector, let's say A, and you multiply it times this matrix right there, you're going to get its projection, its projection onto the line. If you take this vector, should go through the origin. I'm going to draw it in standard position. If you take this vector right there and multiply it times this matrix, you're going to get this vector right here that is contained in the line and whose, when you subtract it from this, it's orthogonal. You know the definition. It's kind of a shadow of that vector. So anyway, I think this is pretty neat. Let's the page card look nice. Card of your blue eye, no? The bar color, the page book, ma. Let's do Yuba Daru so we are pushy by all. Mammy la, mammy girl. Let's do the Myanmar, Myanmar look nice. Ma, the Tenkhane Patta be your Ten Meya Te Yao Shi. Eh, ko? So we are Usam. We are let's do Tenkhane Patta be your Myanmar movie. Let's do the Meso. Let's go. Let's do time in blue eye, no? Be your Janaka. The Kanker me ha. Let's do the Love Best of Me. The Ten Book of Two Arrow. Let's do Usam Kai Me, no? Tenkhane Patta be your. Come ဒီပိကဒီပိကလူကဥဆောင်သွားမယ်ပေါ့เนาะဒီပိကဒီအက်မီနဲ့လက်စကားတော့ပြောပြပြီးဒီကိုရန်အလဲသူကလည်းရရ